I told you I went to Buffalo, last story. I went to Buffalo, and um, yeah, Buffalo, man. God bless Buffalo. I'm talking June. I'm talking 40 degrees, man. <laughs> Coats, blue sky. I mean, uh, gray skies, not blue skies. I was yearning for the Carolina blue skies. It was, it was, it was Buffalo, man. Sorry if you came from Buffalo. <laughs> you have landed at the southern part of heaven. I'm a Carolina boy, man, born and raised. But, but not only was, I mean, I had a good time. I went because I had to go, and I went, yeah, I did what I had to do. But, but what I didn't tell you earlier was it was the, it was the trip from you know where. It, it was to get there and back was the hardest trip I've ever done in my life. So Sunday, after I was with you last Sunday, I headed to the airport because I had to go. We had to fly out that day. They wanted me to come in Sunday morning. I said, nope, got to be at New Hope. I'll come out later. So I went to the airport. Now, I don't know what you do on Sunday afternoons, but here's what I do. I go into a coma every Sunday afternoon. <laughs> And so I'm already angry, you know, I'm just kind of ill, you know. I'm like, I don't want to go, I just want to go home and sleep, you know what I'm saying? And I showed up at the airport, and I'm trying to be a Christian, and, uh, and, and everybody's getting on my nerves, man. And I'm like, why am I even going? I don't even want to go. And, and dadgummit, why are they having this conference and stinking Buffalo, man? Why not Orlando, you know what I'm saying? Los Angeles, you know what I'm saying? New York, anything but Buffalo, man. So I, I get to my gate, but, you know, I do pretty well getting through all that. I get to my gate, and they say, Dr. Kelly, we're sorry the, the flight has been delayed. And I said, all right, that happens, you know, no big deal. So I went over, and I, but it was a long delay. It was about a two-hour delay. So I went and got a seat in the corner, and, and um, <laughs> it's probably embarrassing for you, but your pastor passed out. <laughs> and, I mean, I'm, I was probably drooling, man. I mean, Sunday, Sunday naps, man, are great for me. So I sleep like the whole full two hours. And I wake up, because I kind of set my phone, you know, I, I wake up and, and I see somebody, a staff member is there, so we talk a little bit. But then, then I go back over to the gate, right? Another delay. Another delay. We're sorry. Second delay. Then I'm getting mad, right? Now I just woke up and I'm, 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 I'm halfway a Christian now. But, <laughs> but, but you know, I'm the, I'm the you, you know how you are when you get up from a nap prematurely? So I, I'm, now I'm really mad. So I go over there again, but I can't sleep anymore because I've already slept. So I start doing a little work. Go back the third time, third delay. Third delay. And they said, um, what we can do is we can get you to LaGuardia. I was flying through LaGuardia. Bad idea. They said, they said we can get you to LaGuardia, but uh, you've missed your layover. I'm like, you know, I kind of knew that. I kind of have a, fly, a flight plan. For, I said, well, what are you going to do? They said, well, you can sleep in LaGuardia. I'm like... Bless your heart. Um, no. <laughs> so so I, I was like, no, I don't want to sleep in LaGuardia, man. I'll go home. I'll sleep in my bed. Can y'all get me there tomorrow? They said, yeah. So I go home, sleep, go back up to the airport the next day. They get me there. I do the conference thing. It's, you know, like I said, it's all right. Um, <laughs> I just want to be home, man. And, and so then I go back to the airport Wednesday. I was just there for two days. Monday, flew in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Came back on Wednesday, and I went back to the airport. And I got to the airport on the way back, and I checked into the gate, and they sent me on into the plane. And I'm thinking, yes, God is good. This plane's going home. Glory, hallelujah. And we sit, and we sit, and we sit 90 flipping minutes on the plane not moving. Of which time they then come on the, the speaker and say, um, we need you to deboard the plane. We have snacks for you outside. <laughs> Would you think less of me if I told you I thought about where they could put those snacks? But I didn't say anything. I'm too real with you people up here. <laughs> so we deboarded the plane, but I got off, and the guy knew me before because we had kind of talked a little bit. He goes, Dr. Kelly, there's a, there's a plane right at the gate right over there, gate number 25. We were at like 27. He said, gate 25. He goes, they're going to LaGuardia, and right now the computer is saying that they're leaving. Go! I go to get in the plane. And I'm thinking all the while, it sounds good, but if, why would they let one plane go to LaGuardia and not the other? So I sit, and I sit, and I sit, not 90 minutes, but 65 minutes later. We're sorry for the inconvenience. We need you to deboard the plane immediately. 
we have snacks for you outside. <laughs> this time, I came closer to telling them where they could put those snacks, but I didn't. Went outside, and I went up to the guy, and I'm, I'm like, man, I'm really trying to keep it together here, but this is really getting old. I said, what's going on at LaGuardia? Why are no planes going in? You probably didn't know this. I didn't know this. He goes, oh, uh, President Barack Obama is in the New York area because he's on the Jimmy Fallon show tonight, and they've shut all flights into the airport. Now, listen, I knew the dude was important. I know the president's important, but come on. You're going to shut down the whole airport because you're going on Jimmy Fallon. Come on. So, so, so I go, really? They go, yeah. I said, well, all right, listen. Why don't y'all just forget about LaGuardia? Get me to Atlanta. You get me to Atlanta, I can get on a Delta flight because they go back and forth from Atlanta all day long. Get me to Atlanta and I will make it home. He goes, well, I didn't think about that. <laughs> I thought, bless your heart. Um, so then he sends me racing down the airport to another gate. I get at that gate, and I'm in there. And you can tell this plane's going places. It's moving, right? And right before they get ready to close the door, this woman comes on the plane. I don't know, mid-40s, late-40s, whatever. She comes on the plane, and, and there was a seat right beside me that was, that, that was empty. Would you think less of me if I was kind of praying that it would stay empty? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, it was a long day, but I knew immediately that she was going to be okay because she was so giddy. I mean, she was like in her mid-40s, and she's like, I've never flown before. I'm so excited to fly. <laughs> and she's so excited. And she's just, she's taking out magazines. She's looking around. She's talking to everybody. She goes, I'm so excited to fly. This is awesome. This is awesome. And I'm going, well, good. <laughs> Welcome. You're going to love the flight. They close the door. Five minutes later. They come on. We have discovered that the wing on this airplane is loose. <laughs> Four letter words started to formulate deep in my brain stem. And it was all I could do to catch them before they went off my tongue. So then she goes, oh, the wing's loose. I, I said, yes, the wing's loose. I'm learning this with you. <laughs> she, goes, she goes, what does that mean? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? I said, I, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> so, so, so they said, deboard the plane. We have another one. So we went to the other plane, and she's, she's still excited about flying. I mean, I tried to help her explain. I'm like, listen, it's really good that they discovered the loose wing while we were on the ground. You know what I'm saying? I said, this is good. I said, God is with us. We're, we're good. And she goes, really? I said, yeah, we're good. So they sent us to another plane pretty quick. So we go to another plane, and we sit down, and I drop into the seat, dude, and I'm just like, I got to sleep. Now, some of you can't sleep on a plane. I was born to sleep on planes. I'm the kind of guy, I sometimes will fall asleep before the plane takes off and wake up when the wheels touch down. It's a beautiful thing. Um, so so I, 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 I talk to her a little bit more, and when I can't take it anymore, I fall asleep. I got the window. She's got the aisle. We're flying, and I'm sleeping. And church, out of nowhere... Damn, she locked onto my arm. And camera work, do your job. I mean, she's locked on, man. And I'm like, when she, when I finally pulled my arm away, I could see her fingernail prints in my arm. And and I ah! and, and she's got me. She goes, what's that? And I looked around. I said, I said, we've hit turbulence. She goes, what's going on? I knew I shouldn't fly. And I go, I go, I go, no, no. I pulled my arm back and, and I looked at her. And literally, guys, she was more afraid than any human being I've, I've ever looked into their eyes. She was, she was in meltdown mode. And I didn't know what to say, but here's what I said. I said, it's going to be all right. Some of you need to hear that today. It's going to be all right. 
Though your marriage might not be what you want it to be, stay with God and it's going to be all right. Though your children might not be acting like you want them to act, stay with God and it's going to be all right. Though your vocation might not be what you want it to be, stick with God and it's going to be all right. Though your home life might not be what you want it to be, stick with God and it's going to be all right. He is our kinsman redeemer. He is the one that takes the losses of our lives and he builds something beautiful. He takes the ashes, he takes the mess, and he will make it your message if you will just trust God to do what only God can do in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.